Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to another ELA lesson with me, Miss Mooney. So for today, all you're going to need is your ELA notebook or a piece of paper, and then something to write with, as well as just a clean space to get yourself started for the lesson. So if you have to pause right now to go get those things, go ahead and get those ready. So today our topic is going to be on textual evidence. So I know that that is a new phrase. So we are going, and it's also a new topic too. We haven't discussed it yet. So we're gonna be going into what that means and look at some examples of it. So our objective today is that I can define evidence and find evidence in an informational text. So as you might remember, we've been working with informational text the last um, week and a half. So hopefully that is a good reminder for you. If not, we're going to go back through and we're going to um, revisit what an informational text is. All right, so we're going to start with a little warm activity. So I'm super excited for this warm, active, warm up activity. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some instructions. So number one. I'm going to show you various pictures to help you guess what kind of animals I have at my house. So it's gonna be up to you to kind of play detective and look at the pictures and try to figure out what animals I have. There's gonna be three different kinds of animals you have to guess. Number two is that you are going to look at those pictures and try to determine what animal goes with the picture. So some of the pictures will be a little bit easier to guess, some of them a little bit more tricky, but you just kind of have to try to put the pieces together. And then number three, you are going to write sentences about the pictures. So the sentences are just to help you remember what pictures we saw so that when it comes time for guessing that um, you have a better idea of what you saw or you can help you remember. So for example, if you saw a picture of an apple, you can write down, I saw an apple and I think this animal eats apples. You know, something like that. So let's go ahead and get started with the first slide of pictures. Okay, so animal number one. So the first pictures are of some food bowls and there's four of them it looks like. I also see some foot tracks on the ground on the top. On the top right, I see some little bits of food. So it's something that eats small food, small pieces of food. And then I see three silhouettes on the bottom as well. So this is your first clue as to what animal number one is. So if you have to pause right now to write down some sentences or some reminders um, about what you see in the pictures to try to help you guess later on what animal it is. All right, let's move on to animal number, oh, that says number three, but it should say number two. Animal number two. So I see a cage. Now it looks like it's a pretty smallish cage, doesn't look like a huge animal lives in there. Um, then you can see a couple different objects in the cage. Maybe that'll help you guess. And then I also see a picture. And so I actually took this picture when I was shopping for some new bedding for this animal. Um, so let's see, you can see what pictures of animals are on there, those objects. And hmm, so what kind of animal is that one? So this is animal number two. It says three, but it's number two. Um, so yeah, go ahead and write down some sentences to see if it can help you decide. Okay, now this one is actually animal number three. So animal number three. So all of these pictures look like they're taken outside. So that makes me think that this animal must live outdoors maybe. I don't know, it could be an indication. Um, let's see, on the far left, I see what looks like a pond. So it's something that lives in a pond. On the top is another picture of food and it looks like little tiny pellets of food. I think smaller than the food in the first picture. I also see some eggs on the bottom. So we know that it is something that lays eggs. And then on the, or on the far right, there's a picture of an egg in the ground. So you know that it's something that digs for eggs. So go ahead and write down the sentences for the last animal. Okay, so if you have to pause right now, you can go back in the video to check out the other pictures. But um, at this point, you should have all three animals written down for what you think they might be. All right, you ready to see the answers? Okay, I think picture number one was a little easy because of the dog silhouettes on the bottom, but you guessed it, I have three dogs. So you might, that might have been a surprise that there's three dogs. There was four bulls, but one of the bulls was a water bull. I kind of tricked you. So the first dog, her name is Kiki, and so she's a little chihuahua. 
And then the dog in the middle, that one's name is Mel, and that is a Shih Tzu. And then the other puppy on the far right, it's kind of a goofy picture. You can tell she doesn't really like pictures very much, unlike the first dog who's smiling. But her name is Valen. So yes, the first picture with three dogs. So those are my three puppies. All right, you ready for number two? Number two is a hamster. So the cage might have given it away that it was some kind of rodent kind of animal, maybe a guinea pig, something like that. But you might have guessed that it's a hamster. Maybe you have a hamster at home, so you recognize some of the things that I had in there. But this is my hamster. Her name is Anastasia. Um, we named her after the Disney movie. And um, so you can see in the first picture, that's when we first adopted her from the pet store and she was in her little cardboard box. But then the second picture is of her cozy home and she is eating some lettuce. So yeah, this hamster or this animal is a hamster. So that was the answer to number two. All right, you ready for number three? I think number three was probably the most tricky. And number three are turtles. So my parents have turtles at our house. Um, so in those pictures, you can see the food for the turtles, the pond that they live in, and then those eggs were actually eggs that those turtles in the pictures laid. So there was lots of eggs that were in the ground, but this is just some of the turtles enjoying their evening, swimming around and getting some last minute sunshine before the nighttime comes. So I took these pictures last night, so they are pretty recent too. So great job, thanks for participating in that activity with me. Now, you may have realized that that activity wasn't just for fun, it was actually going to be the beginning or the introduction into our lesson today. So our lesson, like I said, in our topic is on evidence. So you actually just use evidence to figure out which animals I have at my house. So each of those pictures were pieces of evidence that you used to try to determine what animal it was. So when I showed you the pet bowls and the food and um, the paw prints, you could see all of those evidence pictures and you guessed it was a dog. So evidence is something that gives proof or reason to believe. So it's kind of like the picture of the pond gave us a reason to believe that it was an animal that lives outside, that it's an animal that has to live with water, you know, stuff like that. And then in examples, is that it could be pictures like we just said, it could be descriptions, and it can also be facts in a text. So like I said, you use the evidence I gave you to determine which animals I have. So you're already doing it. We haven't even started the lesson. Um, so I know those were just pictures, not wishes to game. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into our informational text we'll be using. So what is a text? I'm sure you've heard me say the word text 10,000 times already, um, but what does that text really mean? So a text refers to any written words that have meaning. So a text, when that says that it has meaning, it's because we put those words together into a section of um, like sentences and paragraphs because we want to convey meaning. We want to show someone meaning. So the word text can also be referred to as an article, a passage, the reading, a selection, an excerpt. I might say the text. Um, those are all different words that you can assume that they all will mean the same thing. You might see different words, like you might see article instead of text when you're at school, but when you take a text or test, you might see passage instead of article or instead of text. And um, so those are all examples of different ways to say text, but they all mean the same thing, just any written words that have meaning. So when we are searching for text evidence, we're looking for proof in the text. So evidence, we just showed you all the different, I just showed you all the different pictures of my animals. That was the proof that you were looking for to determine what animals I have. So when we're looking for text evidence, you're looking for proof, but this time we know that it's not pictures, but it's any kind of written words. So you'll see what I mean more once we get into our text. All right, so this is a quick little guide for how to find evidence in a text. So there's gonna be three steps. So the first step is to locate, the second step is to identify, and the third step is to underline. So let's go ahead and read what each of these mean. <clears throat> so when we locate, we wanna find evidence in a text, we must locate where the information is located in the text. So if you are given a question that you have to answer after you've read a selection of text, you first have to locate where in the text you read that. So was it 
in the first paragraph? Was it somewhere in the middle? Was it in the closing paragraph? Just where on the paper can you locate that information? So for example, if we were learning about sea turtles, I want to know more about the kind of food that sea turtles eat. I must locate where in the text there's information about food. So maybe I remember reading about food in the very first paragraph. So I have to locate that first paragraph. So once I've located my uh, area of where the information is, next I must identify the evidence. So identify is when we locate where in the text our evidence is, we must identify the specific evidence we are looking for. So once you realize that food was in the first paragraph, you must look for where your answer is or where your evidence is. So for example, I found, that my, I found where the text mentions food, and then I identify that sea turtles eat small worms in the water. So the paragraph might be a um, bunch of sentences about food, but I actually have to find the sentence that answers my question. So if my question was, what kind of food do sea turtles eat? I know that I can locate where in the text, so say that it's in the first paragraph, and then I can go in and I can locate the sentence where it talks about sea, turtle, sea turtles eating small worms or whatever else they eat. So then our third and final step is that we have to underline our answer. And so this is kind of more of just a step that helps you in your head. Um, just be able to underline it so that you know exactly what you need to write for your answer. Or if you're doing a multiple choice test, you know exactly what words you're looking for in the answer. It's just really to help keep your brain on track. So once I identify my evidence, I underline the evidence. So you first, you locate the evidence, you know it's in the first paragraph or the second paragraph, you know, wherever. And then second step, you identify the evidence so you're able to go in and point to the sentence or sentences that has your information, and then you underline. So for example, I identified that sea turtles eat small worms, so I'm going to underline sea turtles eat small worms. So sometimes it's just one sentence, other times maybe it's two sentences, like if they said, um, sea, or sea turtles eat small worms, sea turtles also eat small fish. So that would be two sentences that you have to underline because those are both answers. So those are our three steps. Locate, identify, and underline. So are you ready to give this a try? Once we get started and actually read our text and look for the questions, I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So you might have guessed it, but our first text is on sea turtles. So I thought sea turtles would be a fun place to start since I got to show you the turtles that I have at home. So let's go ahead and read about sea turtles in the wild. All right, so, and then this next text up here, that's gonna be our second one, but first we're only gonna focus on the sea turtles. All right, so the first thing you might notice about this text is that there's a picture included. So when there is a picture, that gives us another good indication of what our text is going to be about, what the main idea is. Um, it looks like this text has a literal main idea, just because the text is all about one specific thing and everything talks about that, and the title gives it away as well. So the title is just Sea Turtles. So here are the instructions that it gives. So. I try to create this to look like something that you might find in school where there's a title and then there's instructions and then there's an article and then at the end there's some questions to answer. So let's go through the instructions. So instruction one, read the text. So we first want to do just one whole read of the text to understand what it's about. Number two, use the color shown in the questions to underline answers in the reading. So down at the questions, I wrote down um, that, you know, question number one is red, question number two is yellow, question number three is blue, just because I really like to underline question to answer in the same color, just so that I'm able to quickly see which question goes with which answer. So that's just something that I like to do that makes a lot of sense in my mind. Um, if that's not something that you normally do, you can give it a pract or, um, some practice today if you would like. Um, but if it's not something that you normally do, that's okay too, just a strategy that I liked. And then number three, we are going to write our answer under each question. So let's go ahead and get started with our first read of the text. So sea turtles. A turtle is a reptile that has a shell covering its body. Turtles are known for moving very slowly. There are about 250 species or types of turtles. 
Turtles are found in most parts of the world. Most live in freshwater ponds, lakes, or rivers. Others live in the ocean or on land. Some turtles live in forests or even in the desert. Land turtles are often called tortoises. Some water turtles are known as terrafins. Turtles are all different sizes. The smallest turtles are less than four inches. So it's like this big, it's really tiny. In contrast, the Atlantic leatherback turtle can be more than seven feet long. That is taller than I am. That's, that's taller than your parents probably are. That's really tall. It can weigh more than 1,500 pounds. Turtles have sturdy legs with short feet and claws on their toes. Sea turtles have flippers instead of front feet. A turtle shell is made of bone. It is usually very hard and strong. Most turtles can tuck the head, legs, and tail inside the shell for protection from enemies. Snapping turtles cannot do this, but they have a powerful bite for protection. Turtles eat worms, snails, insects, jellyfish, and shellfish. Many tortoises eat only plants. Turtles can store food in the form of fat. Some turtles can store water too. They live for four, they, they can live for days or even weeks without having anything to eat or drink. All turtles lay their eggs on land. The female digs a hole and lays her eggs in it. The temperature in the nest usually affects the gender of baby turtles. Warmer temperatures generally produce females while cooler temperatures produce males. Turtles will live longer than most animals. Some species can live more than a hundred years old. So if that was a little too fast of reading for you, you can go back in the video a little bit and you can pause and read it by yourself right now if you would like, or have someone help you read it. So now what we're gonna do is that one, we read the text. So now we're gonna take a look at what our questions say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my screen just like that so that we can read the questions on the right side as we read on the left side. So I know that's a little bit funky, um, but just because you don't have the paper in front of you, I wanna make sure that you can still read it on your side, okay? Does that sound good? All right, so let's go ahead and look at our first question. So this one we're gonna underline in red. And so if this was you with your paper and you were in class or anything, you could actually have these colored pencils to underline this with. So when it says red, you can actually go ahead and you can underline with a red color pencil or yellow you'd underline with a yellow colored pencil just to help you keep things in order. So over here, we learned that the first step is to locate where in the text our information is. So red, what type of animal is a turtle? So I remember in the introduction over here, it said that a turtle is a reptile that has a shell covering its body. Turtles are known for moving very slowly. There are about 250 species of turtles. So I just located my text. I know that it talks about the type of animal a turtle is right in the beginning. So now what I'm gonna do next is that I'm going to identify my answer. So what type of an animal is a turtle? Well, I see that a turtle is a reptile. So my third step was to underline. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna highlight it so that you can see all the different colors. Um, but if I had the colors, I would be underlining if I had them with me. But just for the sake, we're gonna be highlighting them. So I see that a turtle is a reptile. So now I can go through and I'm going to put turtle is a reptile. So do you see how that works? How we identify, or excuse me, we locate, we identify, and then we underline or highlight. All right, great job. So now let's look at our next question. What kind of habitats can turtles be found in? So now we have to go back through the text and we have to look for where it talks about the habitats they live in. So a habitat is um, just like the environment that they live in. So I remember that was also in the beginning. Um, so I see that it says turtles are found in most parts of the world. Most live in freshwater ponds, lakes, or rivers. Others live on ocean or land. Some turtles live in forests or even the desert. 
Land turtles are often called tortoises. Some water turtles are known as terrapins. So what I'm gonna do is that I see that that is yellow. So I located in the text where my information is, and now I'm going to identify my information. So I see turtles are found in most parts of the world. Most live in freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers. Others are found in the ocean, and some live in forests or the desert. Oops, that did not highlight. Okay, let's try that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that yellow because my number, question number two was a yellow one. All right, so that's a lot to write. So I don't really wanna write word for word the entire sentence. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into my own words and just kind of sum it up a little bit. So the question is, what kind of habitats can turtles be found in? So I'm going to write, turtles can be found in most parts of the world. including freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers, forests, or in deserts. So instead of writing word for word everything the text said, I just summed it up in my own words uh, for my answer. Okay, great job, Rachel, following okay? And if you're not following as well, um, then you can go ahead and pause the video if you need, and you can um, do these questions on your own as well if you need a little extra help. Well, let's get started on our blue one. All right, so our blue questioner number three is, are turtles only found in one size? So as I keep reading, I already see our next paragraph says, turtles are in all different sizes. So we see right here that that's blue, so I'm gonna get my blue highlighter. And we go through and say, turtles are found, turtles are found in all different sizes. The smallest turtles are left less than four inches, and some can be up to seven feet. So I located in the text where my information is, I identified my information, and now I'm gonna highlight it. So for my answer, like I said before, I'm not going to be writing down that whole long sentence. Instead, I'm just going to write down the most important part. So the most important was that no, turtles are not only found in one size, that turtles are all different sizes. I'm going to write the smallest turtles are less than four inches long and the longest Turtles can be more than seven feet long. Awesome. So the question was that, are turtles only found in one size? No, they're not. They're found in different sizes. And the smallest turtles are less than four inches. And the longest turtles can be more than seven feet. All right, good job. So we only have two questions left, so let's keep going. So for my orange, or sorry, for my green one, I see the question, what are ways turtles can use their bodies to protect themselves? So let's see. Remember it was towards the end of the, or end of the text. So right over here, I see protection. So I know that this paragraph must talk about protection. So step number one, I'm going to um, locate where in the text it talks about it. So I just located that it is in this paragraph right here. Next, I'm going to identify my information. So my question was, what are ways turtles can use their bodies to protect themselves? And I see that it says, a turtle shell is made of bone. It's usually very hard and strong. Most turtles can um, tuck their head, legs, and tail inside their shell for protection from enemies. So it looks like all of that has good information for us. I'm gonna highlight it green. And then for my answer, I'm gonna paraphrase it a little bit. And I'm going to write, a turtle shell is made of bones and is hard and strong. So we know that's one reason why, um, or one way that turtles can protect themselves. And it looks like the other run was that most turtles can tuck and tug their head, legs, and tail 
inside their shell for protection. So that one was in two sentences, like our blue is in two sentences, because um, it's a little bit more information. All right, now let's go with our last question, and that one is the orange one. So what kind of food do turtles eat? So let's, I'm gonna move this on to this one. So what kind of food do turtles eat? So let's start looking. So it looks like the next paragraph actually talks about the food that they eat. So I located my information, and I see that it is in the second to last paragraph, so right at the end of the reading. I'm going to identify my information. Turtles eat worms, snails, insects, jellyfish, and shellfish. And then I'm going to highlight it orange once I found my information. Many tortoises eat only plants, so we didn't need that because that's about tortoises, not about turtles. And it says turtles can store food in the form of fat. Some turtles can store water too. They can live for, day, for days, even weeks, without um, having anything to eat or drink. So it looks like that's just extra information. The question only wants to know what kind of food they eat. So we're gonna go ahead and write, turtles eat worms, snails, insects, jellyfish, and shellfish. So as you can see in that sentence, we actually wrote it just word for word, just because it was a short sentence and it was all just very specific information about that they eat worms, snails, insects, jellyfish, and shellfish. So let's go through and see all of our highlighting now. So now if we wanna go back and we want to check our answers to see how we did, we can easily locate it because we highlighted them. So question number one we knew was red. So whatever I highlighted in red shouldn't answer my question. What type of animal is a turtle? And I highlighted a turtle is a reptile. All right, number two. So I know my answer is what I highlighted in yellow. What kind of habitats can turtles be found in? Turtles are found in most parts of the world. Most live in freshwater ponds, lakes, or rivers. Others live in the ocean or land. Some turtles live in forests or even in the desert. So I was able to easily locate. Okay, let's look for number three, blue. Are turtles only found in one size? Turtles are in all different sizes. The smallest turtles are less than four inches. The largest one could be more than seven feet long. So there's my answer. Okay, now let's look for our green one. So we see our green question, we highlight it in green. What are ways turtles can use their body to protect themselves? And we learned that a turtle shell is made of bone and it is usually very hard and strong and that turtles can tuck their head and legs and tail inside their shell for protection. And that's exactly what we got. And now for our last question, it said, what kind of food do turtles eat? So we should have highlighted the exact sentence. And it's that turtles eat worms, snails, insects, jellyfish, and shellfish. So great job following along with me on that lesson. Thank you so much for working hard on that. Um, you did a great job of being able to read the text and then follow along with our different colors. So do you see how that made it a little bit easier being able just to identify that the red question has to go with the red highlighting. The yellow question has to go with the yellow highlighting. It just makes it a lot easier to go back and check our work. Um, so then there's not just a bunch of highlighter, a bunch of underlines all over the text, and you don't know what text went with what question or what evidence went with that question. So that was a great job. Let's go ahead and work on our second one. All right. So. This text is going to be about killer whale. So I'm going to make it big again as we read. So killer whale. So you might notice the picture again, the title, killer whales. This is gonna be the same exact practice as our last one about the sea turtles. Um, so we have the same instructions, but I'll go over them one more time. So our instructions were to read the text. Number two, use the color shown in the questions to underline answers in the reading. And then instruction number three, write your answers under each question. So here are the text, or here is the text, and then here are questions, just like in the last one. All right, so our first step was to go through and read the text fully without stopping. So let's do that first. Killer whales are also called orcas, are mighty hunters of the ocean. They earned the name killer because of, they eat other whales. Killer whales are the largest members of the dolphin family. The dolphin family is a group of toothed whales 
which are whales with teeth. Like all whales, orcas are mammals. Every few minutes, they come to the ocean, sur the ocean surface to breathe. So that means that they might be all the way down here in the ocean and that they rise up to the surface so that they can take a breath. Killer whales hunt in pods or groups in a way similar to wolves. They circle their prey and they force them into smaller areas before they attack. Once cornered, the orcas take turns biting and ramming their prey. Sending sound waves, sending sound waves that travel underwater, killer whales use echolocation as a means for hunting. Echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. So basically what that means is that they make an echo sound like, whoa, 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 you know, something that will echo and it vibrates. Um, and they're able to locate things around them and their prey around them. And so they actually use that to communicate with each other too, so that they can hear the vibration of the sound waves and they can hear when there's animals approaching. It's really cool. The reverberating sounds provides information about an object's location, size, and shape. Echolocation is also used as a form of communication. Each pod has a distinctive sound it uses to communicate among its members. There are thought to be three types of pods, transit, resident, and offshore. Transit pods are constantly on the move following food sources. Resident pods generally stay in one area close to the shore, while offshore orcas prefer, prefer the open waters. Currently, scientists are not clear as to why there's contra contra contrasting pod behaviors. Some believe it is because there are actually several species of orca, but more research must be conducted in order to test that theory. So there were a lot of big works in that text. I think our questions will help us figure those out some more. So I'm going to go ahead and move these questions onto the other page so you're able to see them. Just give me one moment. Start a new page so we can separate our killer whales and sea turtles. All right, here are the questions. So what I want you to do is I want you to do one through three all by yourself, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and you're going to pause the video for about 10 minutes, however long you need, and you are going to work on this by yourself and see what kind of questions you get, or what kind of answers you get for your questions. So just to review, what we're gonna do is that first you need to locate the information. So you read question number one, locate where in the text there's information about question number one. So for example, question number one is how did killer whales get their name? So you're going to locate in the text where they got their name. Step number two, you are going to identify it. So where did they get their name? You're going to identify the sentence that tells you where they got their name. And step three, you are going to underline the answer. And you're gonna be underlining this one in red, but what you're gonna do is you're just gonna write it in your notebook since you don't have the text. So what you can do is just number one through three, and then you're going to write down your answer right there. So all you're looking at, just to remind you, is red, yellow, and blue. And so I showed the text that's in there. Um, the answers are in there. So go ahead and pause your video for about 10 to 15 minutes, however long you need to work on that. All right, you ready to check your answers? And then we will do some together. So question number one. Where did the killer whale get its name? So I remember reading that right in the beginning in the introduction paragraph. So I'm gonna go back to the introduction paragraph and reread, and I see that killer whales, also called orcas, are the mighty hunters of the ocean. They earned the name killer because they eat other whales. So right there, it looks like our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that for us in the color red. So what I did is that I located that it was in the first paragraph, I identified where in the paragraph our answer was, and then number three, I underlined or highlighted my answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. So how did killer whales get their name? Killer whales got their name because they eat other whales. So is that kind of similar to what you wrote down? Um, it's okay if you didn't word it exactly how I did. It's okay if it's a little bit different, but just as long as you've got that information that Killer whales got their name because they eat other whales in the ocean. 
So great job. All right, let's look at question number two. What distinguishes a toothed whale from other whales? So I'm gonna start reading again. Killer whales are the largest members of the dolphin family. The dolphin family is a group of toothed whales. So I just located where it talks about tooth whales. And the dolphin family is a group of tooth whales, whales with teeth. So looks like that's our answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to highlight that in yellow. So it says the dolphin family is a group of tooth whales. So it just means that they're whales with teeth. How easy is that, right? So I here I'm going to write down tooth and distinguish just means like what separates it, what makes it different. So tooth whales, tooth whales are whales that have teeth easy peasy right there in the text. All right, let's look for the last one that you did all by yourself, which was the blue question number three. And that was, what is the process whales use to hunt? So I'm gonna keep reading. So like all whales, orcas are mammals. Every few minutes they come to the ocean surface to breathe air. Killer whales hunt in pods. Oh, I see the word hunt, so I just located where it talks about it. Or in groups and is similar to wolves. They circle their prey and they force them in smaller areas before they attack. Once cornered, the orcas take turns biting and ramming their prey. So it looks like the whole paragraph kind of gives us good information about this question. So number one, I located that it's in that paragraph. Number two, I'm going to identify my answer. So what is the process? So that they hunt in pods or groups. I also see that they circle their prey and force them into smaller areas. And then once the prey is cornered, they attack. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in blue for us. And then let's write down our answer. So again, I'm not gonna be writing down word for word that whole sentence because there's a lot of information in there. We just need the answer to the question. So I'm going to write down that killer whales hunt in pods. And we already know that pods mean groups from the text. So I'm just gonna keep it at pods. I'm gonna write killer whales, circle their prey, force them into a smaller area, and then take turns biting and ramming the prey. Awesome, just like that. So did your, or did your answer that you wrote down also look like that? Um, that's okay if it was a little bit different again, but just as long as you got the key information from this paragraph right here. Okay, now let's do two together. All right, so next we're looking at number, question number four, which is what is echolocation? So we already know it wasn't in this paragraph because we read the whole thing and it was about hunting. So let's read the next paragraph. Sending sound waves that travel underwater, killer whales use echolocation as a means for hunting. Echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. So I just identified uh, where in my text it was. I just located it, and so that was number one. I located that it was in that paragraph. Number two, I'm going to identify my information. The number three, I'm going to highlight it. So I just identified the sentence right here that says echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. And that is a green question. So I'm gonna go ahead, highlight this green. So it looks like this sentence is a definition. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna write it word for word just because I've never heard of echolocation before. So I'm just gonna write it just like this, just to write the definition. So echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. Awesome, and then as we read on, we can see that echolocation is also used as a form of communication. They have different forms of communication, different distinctive sounds. So if the question gave us um, more, maybe like how is echolocation used, we could write down more information, but it looks like it was just pretty simple. Echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. Okay, let's do our last question which is orange and it is describe the three types of pods. So let's see, this one's talking about communication. So now we're only on one more paragraph, so that must be where our answer is. So we are going to locate that. So I see that our last paragraph starts with that there are three types of pods. So right there we located, now let's identify. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight as I identify this time. So there are thought to be three types of pods, transient, resistant, or resident, sorry, and offshore. All right, 
So let's go ahead and just write that right now. So there are three types of pods. And we're going to use a colon to say what those three pods are. So they are transient, resident, and offshore. So the question told us to describe the three. So we're going to have to go through and describe what each one means. Let's start with transient. Transient pods. And that's like, it looks like the next sentence starts with that and says, transient pods are constantly on the move following food sources. So that's where it talks about it. Now let's write that down. So um, this looks like another definition. So it's okay if you have to write a little bit more word by word from the text. Um, just because it's a little bit hard to put into our own words since we're just learning them. So transient pods are constantly, oops, spelled that wrong. Constantly on, oh, I did spell that wrong again. There we go. Constantly on the move following food. So to be constantly on the move, it means that they never really stop and uh, rest or they never stop in one area, that they're constantly moving wherever the food is moving. All right, so now our next one we have to explain are resident pods. So resident pods, and it looks like that's your next sentence. Resident pods generally stay in one area close to shore. Oh, so that's all it says. So let's highlight it. All right, resident pods generally stay in one area close to shore. Now only have one word described, and that is the last one, which is offshore. So all right, offshore pods. So it looks like the sentence keeps on going and it says, offshore orcas prefer the open waters. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight our last one, orange. So offshore pods prefer the open waters. And just like that, we finished our text and finished all of the questions, so great job. Now let's go back through and it will look it will be highlighted. So if we wanna check our answers, we just have to go to our red question number one and look for the red text. So how did killer whales get their name? And right here, it says that they earned their name killer because they eat other whales. So we got that one right. Yellow, what distinguishes a toothed whale from other whales? The dolphin family is a group of toothed whales, whales with teeth. So we wrote down toothed whales or whales that have teeth. That one's a little, that one's a little funny. I like that one, it's a little bit easier. All right, let's look at our blue one. What is the process that whales use to hunt? So we underline that they hunt in pods, that they circle around their prey, they force the prey in small areas, and then they take turns attacking the prey or biting it, eating it, things like that. And that's exactly what we wrote down. All right, green, what is echolocation? We highlighted echolocation is the use of reflective sound waves to locate objects. And that's exactly what we wrote. And our last question, the orange question was describe the three types of pods. And we went through and we highlighted the three types of pods. And that's all to it. So great job being able to uh, locate those. I know that was a little bit tricky reading a text just right on the computer. Um, but if you needed to go back and review, you totally can. You can just go and you can pause when I have the text and you can read it by yourself, a little bit slower if you need to, and go back through and review how we found those answers. So we are just going to review how to identify evidence in text one more time. So our first step was to locate. We need to locate where our information is in the text. Step number two was we needed to identify. Once we located where it was, we had to identify the actual sentences where information is. And then number three, we underlined or we highlighted the information. So um, towards the end in the killer whale text, you saw that I was able to kind of highlight as I was identifying because I saw it right away. Um, but yeah, so you locate, you identify, and then you underline or you highlight. And then of course, after that, you can go back through and you can check your answers. So if you would like some extra practice, you can go ahead and take this quiz. So the way that you do this is that you open up your phone camera and then you just go and you just hold your phone camera up to this QR code and that's how you open it. And then it comes up just like that and you click it. Oh, I'm gonna put in the passcode. Once we click it, 
you are going to get a screen just like this and you're going to choose the green button that says practice. And then you can go through and you can take the quiz on your own and see how well you understood how to find evidence in text. Um, so after you take the quiz, there's a button that you can push that says show me the answers, so then you can check the answers. Um, and that's okay if you don't get it right the first time, you can watch this lesson again to get some more review, or you can take the quiz again so that you can get that extra practice. So you can use this QR code to get to the quiz, but also in the learning guide, I'll be posting the link to the quiz as well. So thank you so much for learning with me today, fifth graders, and I can't wait to see you at our next lesson.